For decades, Nordic countries have stood as symbols of hope, their borders open wide to immigrants. Known for their unparalleled social welfare and a deep-rooted belief in equality, these countries became the chosen home for many seeking refuge and a fresh start, regardless of their background. Yet beneath the serene landscapes and tales of inclusivity, a dramatic transformation is underway. And at the forefront of this is Denmark, once a paragon of open-door policies. The the country is now leading the charge in redefining the boundaries of immigration. This shift isn't merely administrative. It's a dramatic pivot that places Denmark at the heart of a global debate on the limits of multiculturalism and national identity. Welcome to Living History. Denmark's political scene is not just a simple left versus right battle. The Social Democrats, who are kind of like the US Democrats, have actually been quite successful, winning four out of the last six elections and leading the country for nine of the past 13 years. And yet, Denmark now boasts some of the strictest immigration policies in Europe, no matter who holds power. Why is that? You see, Denmark's policy shift is driven by a complex blend of historical context, integration challenges, economic pressures, and political opportunism. Traditionally, Denmark, like its Nordic neighbors, has embraced a relatively open immigration policy. From the 19th century onwards, Denmark welcomed skilled laborers and refugees fleeing political persecution. However, significant immigration waves in the latter half of the 20th century, particularly from non-Western nations, presented new challenges. Despite efforts to promote integration, Denmark, same as its European neighbors, has encountered hurdles in integrating immigrants. Just consider this, a 2021 report by the Danish think tank Den Nationale Volksningsserhel for Wildfjær found that while many immigrants are employed, they often hold lower-paying jobs compared to native Danes. Language barriers and cultural differences can also impede social integration. Statistics Denmark reports that in 2022, only 63% of non-Western immigrants aged 30 to 64 had completed upper secondary education, compared to 92% of native Danes. The result? The influx of immigrants, many arriving with limited skills and qualifications, has put the Danish welfare system under pressure. In fact, a 2019 study by the Danish Ministry of Finance estimated that the net fiscal contribution, taxes paid minus benefits received, of an immigrant who arrived in 2014 would be positive only after 15 years in Denmark. And then, of course, there is also the security concerns. While not universal, instances of social unrest and concerns over radicalization within certain immigrant communities, particularly following the Mohammed cartoon controversy of 2005 and linked terrorist attacks such as the one in 2015, have been on the rise. Unsurprisingly, the Danes were not happy, but this is also where things took an interesting turn. You see, Denmark's approach to managing asylum seekers and immigration has undergone significant changes, and a lot of it goes back to the Social Democratic Party's clever move to make a tough stance on immigration in 2019, by which they gained significant popular support and destroyed the nationalist right and their momentum. How successful has this been? Nothing highlights this better than their streak of election victories and the stark reduction in asylum applications, from a peak of 21,000 in 2015 to just 1,400 in 2022. What's more, a central piece of Denmark's immigration policy adjustments is the Jewelry Law, implemented in 2016, probably the strictest legislation of its kind in the Western world, which initially allowed for the confiscation of valuables from asylum seekers to cover their living expenses. This this law, criticized by human rights organizations like Amnesty International for its perceived severity, was amended in 2019 to exempt items of sentimental value, reflecting a contentious balancing act between securing resources for welfare provisions and respecting the dignity of asylum seekers. What the law did, however, achieve is that asylum seekers were deterred from staying in Denmark and continued their journey on to, in most cases, Sweden. But it is only when we begin comparing Denmark's strategies with other countries that the contrast becomes truly evident. Take France, for example, where there is an emphasis on integration programs, attempting to facilitate a smoother transition for immigrants into society, despite facing challenges such as high unemployment rates among immigrant populations. This is a notable deviation from Denmark's more deterrence-based approach. 
Further afield, Australia's immigration system, characterized by a points-based selection process that favors skilled immigrants, also includes a robust refugee resettlement program, showcasing a balanced approach between economic interests and humanitarian obligations. Israel, on the other hand, has a unique stance due to its law of return, prioritizing Jewish immigration while also accommodating refugees based on humanitarian needs, reflecting a complex matrix of national identity and security considerations alongside humanitarian commitments. Back in Denmark, on the other hand, Lars Rasmussen, a Copenhagen-based immigration policy expert, observes that Denmark's policy framework represents one of the most restrictive in Europe, particularly in comparison to countries like France or the more holistic approach seen in Australia. The emphasis on deterrence and fiscal prudence in Denmark stands in contrast to the broader humanitarian principles guiding refugee policies elsewhere. That's not not all, though, because Denmark is taking this a step further. But before we get onto that, it would mean the world to us if you hit the subscribe button so we can keep you updated about our upcoming videos. But back to Denmark. You see, Denmark's strategy to combat ghettoization and enhance social integration has been a key policy point, marked by decisive and, at times, controversial measures. The government has actively targeted neighborhoods classified as ghettos, characterized by high concentrations of immigrants, low employment rates, and other socioeconomic challenges. The approach includes forced relocations of residents and the demolition of public housing to break up these dense immigrant communities. Communities. The intent behind such measures is to prevent the emergence of parallel societies and facilitate the assimilation of immigrants into the broader fabric of Danish society, promoting a unified national identity. As you would expect, this forceful strategy has sparked a debate within Denmark and beyond, raising questions about the balance between fostering integration and infringing on personal freedoms. Critics argue that such measures might displace the problem rather than solve it, potentially fracturing communities and diluting cultural identities without offering a sustainable path to integration. But is that really so? Looking over to Sweden, Denmark's neighbor offers a contrasting picture. Sweden's approach has leaned towards social programs aimed at integration, focusing on education, employment opportunities, and community development within immigrant-heavy areas. However, despite these efforts, Sweden has faced challenges, notably a rise in gang-related violence, which some see as an indicator of the semi-effectiveness of its integration initiatives. The comparison between Denmark's direct intervention in dismantling dismantling ghettoized communities and Sweden's more inclusive, yet recently troubled, strategy underlines the complexity of integrating diverse populations. Denmark's approach, while aiming for rapid assimilation and societal cohesion, must navigate the thin line between enforcement and respect for individual rights. Meanwhile, Sweden's challenges serve as a cautionary tale of the potential long-term implications of integration policies that, despite being well-intentioned, struggle to fully bridge the gap between immigrant communities and the broader society. However, Denmark's assertive policies aimed at curbing ghettoization and enhancing the integration of immigrants also carry potential risks. One of the most significant concerns is the possibility of radicalization, as the forced dispersion of communities and the dismantling of social networks is known to create fertile ground for radical ideologies to take root. Furthermore, the aggressive stance on immigration and the visible measures taken against ghettoized communities risk fueling social rejection of multiculturalism. In a society that prides itself on values of tolerance and inclusivity, these policies could inadvertently propagate divisions, stigmatizing immigrants and casting them as outsiders within their own place of residence. This scenario not only undermines the principles of diversity, but also contradicts the very goal of integration, pushing society towards polarization rather than unity. Human rights organizations have voiced concerns over the ethical considerations and implications of Denmark's policies, stressing the importance of addressing the root causes of integration challenges, such as access to education, employment, and fair treatment under the law, rather than imposing punitive measures that may make the situation worse. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And to find out more about the immigration challenges Germany is facing, check out our next video, linked here.